Hello guys, welcome to another episode of the Commerce Lab by Comsi, the place where everything related to Amazon FBA, probably level and e-commerce. My name is Vincenzo Toscano, founder and CEO of Ecomsi, and today we bring you Hasib, who is the founder and CEO of Brandkit, which is basically a solution that will help you automate systems, tools, and solid strategies to save your business from harsh surprises when it comes to cash flow and inventory. So I know Hasib has extensive experience when it comes to supplying a chain. Uh, and that's why I wanted to bring you on board today because we know the last couple of years we've been seeing a lot of struggle in the space in terms of people don't really understanding how to be efficient with their inventory and everything around the supply chain itself. And that's why I wanted to bring you today on board to, you know, touch some of those points and provide as much value as possible. So Hasib, it's a pleasure to have you here. How you doing, my friend? Yeah. Thank you, Vincenzo. Uh, I think you, um, thank you for this inviting me. I was looking forward to that to discuss some points around supply chain. And uh, I will start a little bit with about my background. I know uh, I haven't spent a lot of time in the industry, like it is almost three years, but uh, yeah. while working with big companies that are having focusing on the supply chain part specifically, and uh, I have seen a lot of gap that other sellers are missing. So I think today uh, the whole purpose will be to cover those points. And uh, uh, I have been working in the aggregate industry for the last two years. So I definitely know all the ins and outs and how they are managing the supply chain part. So excited to kick off and uh, let's jump right into the topic. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So thank you very much for the introduction. So yeah, as you mentioned, you already have some experience working with aggregators, as you mentioned, and I bet you also have experience working with multiple brands. And that's why I, I think I'm gonna use that opportunity to kickstart with a, one of the first questions of the days, a, which is basically the big question is why actually nobody's focusing around a supply chain? Because I feel like everybody talks about it, but realistically, and we see that as well when we work with clients and we do audits, nobody's really doing, being efficient when it comes to implementation of it. So maybe you can give us a bit of insights around that. Uh, what are some of your tips? Yeah. Yeah, and so I will start a little bit with uh, how actually what actually supply chain is basically. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the supply chain, it is not something that you can control all or you on your own. When it comes to supply chain, like you are dependent on certain outside variables that are out of control of your company. For example, if we take a look at uh, like a corporate company, you have a supply chain department and then it gets in touch with uh, either with, with the, at one side it's in touch with the finance team at the other side it is you know working with the brand management side and there are outside uh, factors that are you know changing on daily basis like supplier relations freight forwarding things and all that so you have to keep an eye on the economic conditions as well and uh, i think that is something very important to have like a solid grip on your supply chain for your brand or a company so the the thing that i have seen that in the e-commerce ind industry is most of the sellers are like solo entrepreneurs so mm -hmm. they started you can say around um, four or five years back while running you can say they started from either from a job or some even started without even, uh, even having a job at a corporate sector they just started focusing on a product and they started contacting suppliers they got a margin and then they got amazon as a sales channel so that's they start they started selling on that so in in that whole race uh, there is one gap missing because if uh, whenever you fo you see any brand that is successful, there are multiple departments at the backside like customer service, marketing, growth, and then it get in touch with the supply chain part and the finance and legal side. So these all departments run in collaboration with each other. And if there is any kind of gap in the system, then it is hard to build a successful brand as you grow. So yeah. uh, most of the seller, like they are highly enthusiastic, you can say, to push the sales to certain limit. So they will start learning the marketing part and they will cover that. But when it comes to the supply chain part, they will not exactly focus like what are the ins and outs and how they can manage inventory and cash flow and all that stuff. So I think uh, that is where we were seeing gap. And uh, while working with these big companies, we got a little bit insight on how they are controlling everything and how an efficient brand can work when it scales to like seven to eight figures. And when you are managing, mm -hmm. you can say one fee 50 to 200 SKUs. 
Yes, I, I totally agree with everything you just shared. I feel like supply chain when it comes to selling on Amazon, for most people when they're getting started on this journey in terms of opening their business and selling on Amazon, they think that supply chain is something, it's like an afterthought. It's something you do towards the end. It's not really important yeah. at the beginning. They just focus on the typical, you know, listing optimization, advertisement and so on, but they don't sometimes even do like inventory forecasting they don't really know how to you know efficiently handle the inventory with three pls and, and all that and 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 i get what you mean like, i feel like once you start reaching a certain point if you start ne neglecting this area of your business you're gonna struggle uh, and we saw that the last couple of two years when everybody exactly. was having issues to have inventory from China, uh, shipments were taking extra months because of everything that was happening in terms of the collapse of the system. So for people that didn't have that into account, they were out of stock and they lost all the momentum in terms of the system. Yeah, I would, I would add one point here, like in start, when you are just starting, you have like four or five SKUs and just building the brand. I think you will not feel the need of this at that stage. But when you grow like after 1.5 or uh, you can say almost one year, you will feel the gap that you are uh, like your one SKU is getting in stock and then another one is getting out of stock. So you don't have a clear insight like what is happening with me. So uh, that is where you actually need to focus on the supply chain part. That's great. Awesome. Yeah. So um, now you were also mentioning, um, and I think it's important to to bring this to a table because, as we mentioned, maybe at the beginning when you're getting started, maybe with just you know 500 units, you're gonna be fine if you don't have a, a good plan when it comes to supply chain. But the reality is that as you start scaling and you start bringing to the table seven and eight figures, where it's realistically we see the huge challenges, it's challenging, you know, for this brand. So I would like to use this as an opportunity to basically hear your take about what have you seen in this space and how you're seeing seven and eight figures brand basically losing a profits because of poor inventory management. Yeah, yeah uh, I would like to add one point here because as a brand owner, you are always, you can say it is a mindset that you try to achieve more sales. So you are you are taking a look at external factors, but most of the time your mind is saying that let's push the stock and let's get it going. But then actually you will see sometimes that uh, the things are not that much favorable and you are just overly predicting it. So the first thing is to rely on data and don't over predict anything. I think that is the most common mistake that I have seen sellers making. They just order excess stock or at some times mm -hmm. They don't know like uh, what I have to order and what factors they're I have guessing, to They're guessing basically. Like. They're guessing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. That is like a very important thing to do in start. And uh, I think in start, once you run into an, ex an excess stock, you will feel that burden over the time. So that is something very important. You need to change that mindset and uh, rely on the data. Uh, when I talk about data, so it, it can be like search results from Amazon. It can also be, uh, you can say, talking with the supplier and seeing the market trends or mm -hmm. reading multiple reporting reports or statistical data that is relevant to your market or niche. So uh, I will not go deep, deep. I will not dig down deep into the resources, but yeah. just to let you know, this is the main thing. And uh, the second most important thing is inventory management is not something like you say, I have done this right now. I have placed the purchase order and let's forget it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. once you place the purchase order, I think the real inventory management starts yeah. <laughs> while placing the order as well as after that. So you have to know, like, let's mm -hmm. say I have 10 SKUs and I have placed this purchase order. So mm -hmm. how I can I split this purchase order into multiple segments? Because for example, if you have put a huge purchase order, and you are shipping it at once, then there are multiple instances that a supplier will, a freight forwarder will either tell you that it got lost or there is some issue, there is some delay. So you will, you know, you will get out of stock on your main SKUs. So you need to split those, those purchase orders into certain categories and then uh, ship that. Also, when you place a purchase order, you need to keep a check on that. So we have multiple solutions around that. Either you, uh, design a system or you can just set automatic emailing stuff and uh, to keep a check on the supplier to get updates okay. on daily basis. So that is, I think, something very important to keep a check and balance of each and every part of your inventory. Awesome. And uh, yeah, and another big challenge that I have seen is uh, most of the sellers, when they order something, 
uh, they don't use 3PL in start. So I think that is a, a very important because they ship everything directly to Amazon and there they have a stock like you can say 100 days of cover or 120 mm -hmm. days of cover of stock. So that is something you need to focus on from start and you need to have a 3PL in place and send only we have a limit. We send like 35 to 60 days of cover to Amazon. Whenever we reach up to 35 or 30, we create a shipment again and send that to Amazon. So in that way, you can uh, save a lot of uh, storage cost as well as you are uh, avoiding a lot of risk when it, when it comes to suspension from the Amazon side. Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah. And just to quickly interrupt you, I think it's important to add on, on that point that the benefit of also doing what you just mentioned is that on Amazon Eyes, you're actually getting rid of inventory quite fast, right? So that actually is going to improve the history of your inventory score with the Amazon because they see you're not sending thousands of units uh, because you don't have a trip yet. And then they are just sitting in Amazon for months. So I think what you mentioned is good. I mean, you have one month inventory. And as soon as you start going under that, you send more. So yeah, I just wanted to add that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, hundred percent. I agree there. And uh, another point that I would like to add that comes a little bit in your later stage. So when you have a three PL and you are sending in uh, constantly stock from three PL to Amazon or purchase orders are coming, multiple purchase orders are receiving at three PL. So you are not keeping an exact eye on how you are reconciling your stock. So when I talk about reconciling, it actually means like this is the stock that was delivered to the warehouse and this is what mm -hmm. I'm sending out. So you lost that count many times and you lost a lot of stuff. If your 3PL is not that much good, you lost some stuff in the 3PL and you are, you know, keep you are missing that part uh, as you grow. So yeah. that is something you have to create a system either in sheets or there are multiple tools available that you can do that you can use for that purpose to keep a track of the inventory, what is going in and how I'm sending out so that there is a perfect balance also. Mm -hmm. And uh, one more thing I would recommend here if you are working with a 3PL, try to get some kind of monthly or you can say bi-weekly reports from them on the inventory of each SKU so that you have an update like my accounts are matching with what 3PL has. So this is another thing like we see the reimbursement path with Amazon. This mm -hmm. is something that you need to do with 3PL and I have seen people losing a lot of money while not looking at this part specifically. Yeah, that's that's a good tip because I feel most people think that Amazon is the only one that can actually lose your inventory. But you're right. Sometimes you, the three PLs can also lose your yeah. inventory, and if you keep track of that, I mean, it can be hundred units here, hundred units there, and then we're talking thousands of dollars, which can definitely hit your bottom line profit. So great advice exactly. on that. So um, before we jump in this section to my next question, I would like to ask you. So usually, um. I, I know we mentioned this is not something that you do once. It's something that you constantly need to do when it comes to inventory management. So just to clarify for everybody here on board uh, that are seven figures and up, would you, what is the time frame you would advise them to uh, the frequency of having this check? Is, is it going to be weekly, maybe two weeks, monthly? Uh, what is usually the frequency of that? So uh, it depends on a 3PL actually. So at some 3PLs we are running, like a monthly check is a very good strategy. Mm -hmm. But uh, most of the warehouses, uh, if you can do bi-weekly, I think it is much better. But most of the warehouses are not providing those reports. So if you can do it on a monthly basis, at least once in a month, I think that is highly recommended. And you should your, your 3PL should actually follow that strategy and just create a history of like how inventory is changing over time in either a Google sheet or in some tool so that you remember how the units are changing and how I'm sending out the inventory. Awesome. Yeah. Um, now, uh, all this sounds amazing. They're all great strategies, but sometimes I have this conversation with brands that are seven figures and up. And when you mention this to them, yeah, and I know Vincenzo, I need to implement this, but you know, my brand is multi-channel. I'm selling across multiple uh, countries. So doing this in every single country, every single marketplace, it's just mind blowing, right? Uh, so maybe let's talk about that. What are some of the, you know, the complexity you have seen around that and maybe some solutions if you can give us some, yeah. Yeah, so I think multi when when it comes to global expansion, especially I have seen seller facing issues in Europe uh, mm -hmm. because there you have multiple countries and uh, you lose a track of uh, how everything is managed. 
so uh, for example if you are sending a shipment from china and uh, you are trying to split it between us and eu because obviously you cannot ship directly to us and then ship to europe so most of the time seller will do a split between europe and us and there you need to have like a forecasting system which can which should be based on each marketplace you should take the numbers of each marketplace and then uh, do a correct split for that so that uh, we get correct stock in each country because uh, let me give you one example for one of our brand we were shipping stock from uh, us uh, we were shipped down from china to us and uh, in that uh, process what we did we over predicted some stock that was sent to be sent to, like that was assigned for the eu so mm -hmm. that is some kind of issues that most of the people ran into and uh, here i think the most important part is how you are forecasting the stock so yeah, yeah. Uh, that is something highly challenging when it comes to multi-channel fulfillment and also it a uh, layers of complexity add over there if you are having multiple channels as well so this is something there where we uh, take year on year sales and all the data and we make sure that we don't over predict anything and at the same time we try to work with the growth team like what are the growth goals and how we can align that with the forecast that we have so that we can in the end we can have a correct uh, stock so that is i think if we go down a little bit in that detail it will become quite technical but just to shortly explain mm -hmm. we highly focus on each, each sales channel in each marketplace and we get the data from there and then we place the purchase order to make a correct forecast and uh, a correct yeah and a correct a split is assigned of at the supplier end so that we don't mix mm. or uh, Mm -hmm. you know get some error while shipping the stock so that so, is a, a very important thing in the multi-fulfillment brand so basically uh, just to summarize for everybody watching this what you will do you will have your own systems and processes for each individual country so you keep track of inventory at the country level and then i guess at the end of the month maybe you do a consolidation with all the countries combined maybe right yeah exactly okay yeah i think that that's a that's a useful tip because i feel like maybe what most people do they have let's say five thousand units and they start shipping the the units around the countries and they will do the consolidation at, with all the countries combined at once and and they don't do all the diligence at the country level and then that's why you start having all the discrepancies in in in, in numbers and all the compliance and <laughs> And then yeah. it can become a, a bit too technical, as you mentioned. Awesome. Um, now, we know this was a huge issue last a uh, couple of years because of everything that happened worldwide, but we know this is for sure going to uh, stay as a challenge, especially in 2023, as we see, you know, Amazon being more strict with inventory limits exactly. uh, and the fees and everything. So I wanted to ask you, what are some of the changes you see coming to Amazon in 2023? Or what is some advice maybe you can provide us to overcome those as the year starts? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I will start a little bit with what we have faced in uh, Q4. So one thing that I would like to recommend anyone who is using AGL. So if you are in Q4 for the next year, please don't ship anything when mm -hmm. uh when it's if something is arrived like you can say if you are focusing some stock that is to be arrived in october or november please don't expect it to be arrived through agl because we have seen multiple shipments getting stuck in that part of mm -hmm. the year and uh, uh, i would recommend to avoid agl using those days while shipping okay. from china so that is something uh, that we learned from the Q4. And uh, uh, at the same time, I would like to add another point as well. So when you are forecasting a stock for the Q4, what most of the seller do is they take the whole December part as the sales. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, like, for example, if you have a little bit of seasonality in your brand and you have a sales loss, let's say 20 units per day in Q4, and normally it is like, uh, five or ten units mm -hmm. so what it will do is if you forecast it for let's say for the last 10 to 12 days over forecast then you will carry that inventory for the next five, four or five months or if yeah. you do something more if you sell a little bit more than that then the error and the complexity will add on so uh, in q4 what we see what we have learned that you have to forecast till 18th till 20th of december 
and after that what you can do is as a backup you can you should uh, plan fbm so that you can cover the last days of q4 if you uh, sell something more than you predicted so i think that is something that will add value to for the lot of sellers because uh, most of the people when q4 is over and especially this year uh, they are left with the overstock condition so awesome. um, that is i think q4 is giving us some lessons here mm -hmm. that's that's a yeah. good advice and i think just to conclude that point as well i feel like using last couple of years as a as a as a benchmark i don't think it's also a good thing to do right now because most people i have found that they saw an increase across some of their brands last couple of years because of everything that was happening with the pandemic people shopping more online and all of that but yeah. we have seen that in some of the niches sales are going downwards and therefore if you do your projection based on 2021 when everybody was at home and the need to use amazon and then you use that to buy inventory for 2023 you might find as you're mentioning with more stock in hand but then it's going to cause you more issue in terms of management higher fees and, and so on so it's a good point for sure yeah one one point i would like to add here as well so there is one one more thing if you are running out of stock for a brand for a product so what you can do is uh, like out of stock is something that is highly uh you can say damaging to your brand and mm -hmm. your ipi score so what a trick a little bit of a trick that you can do is uh, for example you have like five or ten units of a product left what mm -hmm. you can do is you can apply apply a price hike on that listing sku so it will move that inventory to a stranded state so what this will do is it will not affect your ipi score in that way which like if you run out of stock because that is highly damaging to your listing so when the listing goes to trend standard it will pause the sales for a little bit when uh, until you get more stock but you can improve your ipi score in that way mm. and i think that that is something uh that will save if you are at the brink of you know damaging your ipi score so that can save you um interesting some, so basically yeah. what what you would advise is to uh, increase the price significantly so you basically suppress the listing due to the pricing uh, uh, the amazon suppress when you increase the price significantly and the inventory becomes stronger that's what you mean right yeah exactly so it will like you lose uh, the buy box. IPS, yeah. exactly api score will take it as a standard not something that you are out of stock okay interesting yeah i have never heard yeah. that so that's a good thing thank you for sharing yeah uh, and great so now i think we're coming towards the end and now for sure based on everything you just shared i would like to hear more about what brand kit can do for all those sellers that are hearing this because i know we're talking about all some of the high level strategies and some of the tips but realistically some sellers they don't really have the bandwidth to implement this on a daily basis and that, that's where brand kit can come in and help them so maybe you can give us a little bit of, about what are the services you guys provide and how does it work yeah yeah so um actually we are um in the supply we are co solely focused on the supply chain part of e-commerce and we have an in-house team we manage each and everything from uh, from our office and i think that is something very important when it comes to collaboration across the team so this is something that uh, in the supply chain is very important while running a while managing a a, a portfolio of you can say 200 or 300 skus mm -hmm. uh at the same time when it comes to forecasting i think that is the most challenging part for every brand and one thing i would like to mention here if you are even uh, you can say a big corporate company or uh, a, a brand for example png still the forecasting that you will generate will only be at maximum 60 percent accurate so we mm -hmm. need to take that into account and if an expert is not looking into that or you don't have a system there then your chances are like 30 percent or 20 percent so mm -hmm. we uh, uh, over time what we have done is we have tried to test multiple software as well and uh, at the same time we we have built our in-house systems that that is that allows a lot of flexibility in managing the forecasting for multiple SKUs and large brands and at the same time we take inputs and feedbacks from the 
a growth team your growth team or if you are managing your own own brand we will take the marketing input or the deals that you have and that will be uh, in in the alignment of the stock that we will order over time so in that way you will have the whole you can say in the graphical representation as well and all the numbers for the next coming months that you will be selling so that is something that we are doing in house and we try to do it through manual as well as uh, through tools that we have tested over time awesome. and uh, yeah and like most of our services are highly relevant to the companies that are in seven to eight figures and most want to scale and have systems and sops so uh, we have tried ERP systems as well we uh, we have worked on skibana and netsuite and at the same time we have uh we are working on the implementation part of that as well and how mm -hmm. to structure each and every department and how to improve the work how to get more work out of it for us so that uh, you don't have to rely on manual uh you can say manual entries or manual persons mm -hmm. so that is uh, a, a more you can say a more favorable part for the brands that are selling to have a system in place instead of uh you can say increasing the headcount yeah Sure. Yeah. So uh, these are some of the services that we provide. And uh, I think these are uh, like highly important for those companies that are scaling. And because all of our experience is coming from the aggregator space and mm -hmm. the large brands that are dealing like you can say 1000 or 1500 SKUs. And uh, we know all the challenges that a seller can face if they want to scale uh, from seven to eight and so on. Wow, that's great. So yeah, yeah for sure. Um, I mean, you guys are the the perfect solution for everybody that's struggling right now with you know supply chain issues and and things to do with inventory management. So for sure, I would advise to everybody watching this to to reach out. And for that, I don't know if you can share with us maybe how people can reach out, out to your team, your website, anything you got on. Yeah. Yeah. So I am uh, available on LinkedIn as well as on Facebook, and we do have a website that is going to be live soon. So uh, I think uh, LinkedIn will be a best option if you want to reach out, and I'm always available. Also, uh, if you want to, I can attach my email, or you can attach my email, so that will sure. also work. Yeah. Yeah, that's great, Hasib. So thank you very much for your time. I'm looking forward to have you in a future edition, so we can keep talking about supply chain issues. Yeah. Sure. Been a man. Pleasure. Yeah. Same here. It was nice talking to you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.